Hello, this is Dr. Angela Shaw Thornburn. Today we're going to discuss the issue of the unethical and ethical use of sources. Before we begin, let's do an icebreaker activity. As a group, review the following scenario. After reviewing it, decide as a group whether the use of sources in the scenario is ethical or unethical. Pause this recording while you have your discussion. There's nothing wrong in most situations with consulting what others have said and written about a topic that interests you. In fact, engaging in this kind of research is an important part of learning about the major concepts and thinkers on a given topic and can often lead you to refine and explore your own ideas, so much so that most majors will require that you complete a research paper. In fact, to engage in research is to engage in dialogue, an important part of the learning process. When you enter your profession, finding, responding to, and incorporating the ideas of others will be an important part of your job. Most professions and fields of study have established guidelines for how to give credit properly when you consult and incorporate the work of others into your own work. This system of giving credit is called documentation. Examples of documentation styles include the Modern Language Association, the American Psychological Association, and Chicago Manuals of Style. Usually your professor or your workplace will let you know what the standards are for documentation. When in doubt and you are using external sources, ask for the standards or research them online at the MLA, APA, or Chicago Manual of Style websites. Documentation is not optional. Giving credit by using documentation is not optional. You must use some form of documentation every time you use the words, ideas, or organization of ideas of another person, no matter how small or how large is the sample that you use. Let's go back to look at the original scenario to apply what we've discussed so far. The use of these websites in this instance is actually unethical. Building, maintaining, and uploading a website is a lot of work. If the websites are good ones, the person or group responsible for the websites spent a great deal of time researching and building the website. The few minutes the student spent scanning these websites in no way gives credit for all the hours of work that went into the websites. That's hardly fair. The student is actually getting credit for important parts of the learning process that he or she never completed. Homework is often assigned to give the student the chance to apply concepts or demonstrate what he or she has learned. Skipping this work that it takes to complete this process on your own means that you may not actually know something you need to know. The paragraph the student submits also misleads the professor by implying that the student actually took the time to study and reflect on issues that were probably covered in the textbook or during class discussion. In any case, the student misses out on a chance to learn something and the professor misses out on a chance to figure out what his or her students really know. Making the unethical choice to plagiarize, cheating, has a very negative impact on true learning, even if the student never gets caught. Now, as a group, please review the following scenarios. After reviewing them, decide as a group whether or not the use of sources in this instance is unethical or ethical. Please pause the recording. When you're done as a group, please review the remaining slides. 